Hello, my name is Luke, and welcome to this PyTorch tutorial series. In this video, we're looking at latent diffusion models. If you're new to the channel, all the code you see here is available in my GitHub repo, link in the description. And this video is a part of a larger PyTorch tutorial series that you can find on my channel. So we've looked at image diffusion before, process of noising and denoising images in order to generate new images. But in this video, we're gonna look at a different type called latent diffusion, where instead of diffusing on the image itself, we're diffusing on the compressed latent representation of the image from an autoencoder or a variational autoencoder. So it's been a little while since the last tutorial video where we looked at transformer-based large language models. And going forwards, what I'm going to do is go back over some of the algorithms and mythologies we've seen before and look at more complicated or more complete versions of them that might be actually more useful in a real world situation as well as looking at other tools and libraries and environments that have been created for deep learning around PyTorch in order to implement some of these more complicated, more real world solutions using deep learning. We're gonna to start to see that in this video as well. So as I said, the only real difference between latent diffusion and image diffusion is that we're diffusing on the latent representation from a variational autoencoder rather than the image itself. Now, why might we wanna do this? Well, basically because the latent representation of the image has a lower number of spatial dimensions. And therefore, throughout our model, we have to do less computations, less calculations at any stage throughout our model. So if the spatial resolution of our image is lower, we have to do less steps per layer of our convolution. Therefore, our forward pass might be faster, or we could potentially train higher resolution image generators on lower end hardware. So in the image diffusion video, the last model we trained was on Cypher 10, which is an image data set of 32 by 32 pixel images. That was quite a large model. It took quite a long time to train, but it was only 32 by 32. With latent diffusion in this video, we're gonna be able to train a 256 by 256 sized image generator just by using the simple trick of training on the latent representation of a variational autoencoder instead of the original image itself. Now, the size of our model is in the number of parameters is probably gonna be the same because the complexity of the model will be the same. That latent representation should still contain all the information from the image, especially if we wanna decode back to the original image from the latent representation. And the complexity of the distribution and the amount of information contained within our model is gonna be the same. So it's gonna have the same number of parameters, but we have to perform less computations at each stage because spatial resolution or the number of dimensions of our input is small. The first stage of training our latent diffusion model is to convert the images to their latent space representations. You could do this during training. So load an image from our data set, pass it through the encoder of our VAE, pass that latent representation, you know, noise it up, pass that through our denoising model. Or a more efficient way to do it is to pre-process our data set, convert all the images to their latent representations so we're not doing it multiple times over the epochs during training. So the extract features notebook here just outlines a basic way of doing that. So we're actually gonna use a pre-trained variational autoencoder from Hugging Face's diffusion library. So we looked at Hugging Face in the large language model video where we looked at the tokenizers and we're gonna get more into Hugging Face and its tools and its pre-trained models and its pre-written training code sometime in the future. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But in this video, we're just gonna look at its pre-trained and pre-built variational autoencoder model. So we don't have to do that ourselves. So you'll need to install Hugging Face's diffusers. And from that diffusers models, we're going to use the autoencoder KL. So an autoencoder trained with a KL divergence loss, which is what a VAE is. And note that that variational autoencoder we're gonna use downsamples the input image space by a factor of eight. So we're gonna be using 256 by 256 sized images downsampling by a factor of eight will give us 32 by 32 spatial dimensions for our latent space. And this particular model we're using has four channels in the latent variable space. So autoencoders KL is the actual model architecture, but we need to load some pre-trained weights and we're gonna use the pre-trained weights from stable diffusion. So stable diffusion is a latent diffusion model and we're gonna use its variational autoencoder in order to encode our images and then decode them later on. The stability AI, ST, VAE, FT EMA. And EMA is the exponential moving average. So it's not the original weights. They were also keeping track of an exponential moving average to sort of smooth out any noise in the training procedure. So that'll download the pre-trained weights. It'll only happen once. First time you run this, we'll move that to our device and we'll get our VAE on our device. So in order to load the images, we'll just construct a basic image folder data set and then use that to create our data loader. So we'll process a batch of images at a time and then individually save those to file. So that extraction loop just looks like this here. We have our VAE, 
We pass that just through the encoder with the encode function. This will return a PyTorch distribution. I think it's just a normal distribution, which we need to sample from. So mu and sigma will go into that. We'll sample from that distribution. And then you can see here, we're actually multiplying the resultant latent variable by some magic number. This magic number actually comes from stable diffusions training. And this is basically just rescaling the latent variables to be closer to a standard normal distribution. Because we're going to be using standard normal distribution noise when training our diffusion model, we want to make sure the magnitude of the latent variables is similar to standard normal noise, or else the noise won't have too much of an impact on the actual latent variables until the noise value is sort of cranked right up. Because this VAE was trained to be really good at decoding the images back to the original image, it was only very lightly regularized with that KL divergence penalty, as we talked about in the VAE video. If you want to make sure your VAE can encode and decode the image with a really high quality output decoding. You can't regularize it too much or else you'll lose too much information and we won't get back that high quality sharp image. So for this VAE, I think the latent variables are like plus or minus 20 within that distribution. Whereas a standard normal distribution, sigma is one, we get like plus or minus three. So we need to scale it back down. So it's a similar magnitude range as our noise. Or as I said, the latent variables will overpower the noise. We won't get that nice forward diffusion process of gradually removing the information. It'll happen very quickly at the end. In any case, we get our latent features, we detach them, pass them to our CPU, and then we save them one at a time with just NumPy save. So pretty straightforward. Once we've done that, the rest of the procedure is pretty much exactly the same as image diffusion. We use our forward process to noise the images, pass them through our diffusion model, get an unnoised image, and so on and so forth. I already covered cold diffusion, which we're gonna be using here again in the previous video, so I won't go through that here. The only real difference I've made to the code here is in the actual UNet model itself. I've actually pulled this model from my PyTorch diffusion GitHub repo. It's a bit more complicated than the previous UNet we saw, but really the general gist is exactly the same. The only real difference is how we're constructing the UNet and the procedure for that and also the introduction of some attention layers in the actual unit. We talked about adding attention to CNN models in a previous video. So how we can cast attention between spatial regions within the feature map, within the layers of our CNN, so that we can combine information across the spatial regions of our feature maps quicker than a normal convolutional layer would do that. I won't go into this too much here. It's a bit of a different method. I'm not using PyTorch's multi-headed attention layer. It is kind of easier to just use a convolutional layer instead of trying to reshape and use linear layers. We also tend to downsample the channel dimensions quite aggressively when we're using it for images, which is something you can't really do with just a multi-headed attention layer from PyTorch. I'm also doing the reshaping in a bit differently here. You can see I'm using Einstein's Einstein notation. So it's gonna be a whole nother video, so I won't go into that in too much detail here. We also have another type of attention called linear attention or global attention or channel wise attention. With the spatial attention that we covered in the previous video, we're querying different spatial regions so that each spatial region can kind of look at what's happening in the rest of the image. As we spoke about in that video, it's quite computationally expensive to do the self attention with images because even for low resolution images or low resolution feature maps, say 32 by 32, that equates to 1024 queries with equivalent to a sequence of 1024 embeddings just for a low resolution image. So what linear or channel wise attention is, is instead of querying across spatial regions, we're querying across channels. So that each channel will sort of query what's going on in all the other channels. It kind of already happens with a convolution because each convolutional kernel operates across all channels. But technically we are also mixing spatial information but less directly. So it's not as good as direct self attention across spatial regions, but it's sort of more efficient at higher resolutions where we have less channels and more spatial regions. So what we tend to do and what I'm doing with this unit here is for large feature maps, we're using this channel wise attention and for smaller feature maps, we're using the self attention. So you can see I have a variable here called self attention resolution. Basically for feature maps above this resolution, we're using that global linear channel wise attention. And for resolutions equal to or less than this, we'll use that self-attention, that spatial self-attention. But apart from that, it's pretty much the same as what we saw before. The only other real difference we've made is in our data set. Again, we're just loading those latent variables that we've already created with a very simple data set here. Just loads each of the latent variables. And then we use that to create our data loader. The rest of the code is exactly the same. A cold diffusion process when generating the latent variables is exactly the same. So we'll be generating latent variables, not images here. And again, I talked about that in the previous video. When constructing a model, it's the same. 
channels in will be the number of latent channels, which as I said, will be four in this case. Image size is just the size of our latent spatial dimensions, which as I said, will be 32. Dim out is the number of channels out. Dim here is the base channel width. And then dim multipliers are what to multiply it with to expand the channel width as we get deeper into the unit. Same as the other unit we saw in the previous video. I've actually already pre-trained a model as per usual. This model here only has 35 million parameters, so it's not really a big model still. The training procedure is exactly the same again, except we're using latent variables that we've already created instead of the images. The noising and everything else and the loss is exactly the same. So this model I have trained for 600,000 iterations. Good thing I've already pre-trained it because it took a few days of training in order to get these 600,000 iterations. And that might seem like a lot of training, but in the literature, similar models for similar data sets are actually trained for up to a million to two million iterations. So this isn't really that much training compared to how long these are usually trained for. And, and again, 35 million parameters isn't even that much. We're not looking to achieve state of the art here. We're just looking at how these latent diffusion models are trained. So once it's trained, again, we can load our VAE, our pre-trained VAE. The parameters have already been downloaded, so we won't need to do that again. And what we can do is, is just generate some new latent space representations for some fake images. So instead of generating images, we'll be generating latent representations. So we provide our seed noise, same as before, as well as our unit. Cold diffusion process now will be creating fake latent variables, not fake images. And then with those fake latent representations, we pass those through our decoder. We need to rescale them to the original magnitude and we'll get our fake sample, hopefully our realistic looking fake image. So we can do that. We have 500 iterations as well in our diffusion process. So quite a bit more than the previous videos when we were just doing simple diffusion on Fashion Amnist and Cypher 10. So it takes a little bit longer here. So we've got our images and we can have a look. So quite a bit noisy, not great. Again, it's not state of the art, but again, we need to train for longer with a larger model. However, as you may have noticed, I had actually a scale factor in front of the initial seed here. So one technique to improve the quality of images is actually to scale down the magnitude of the initial seed noise, making it closer to the mean of the noise zero. As a result, we sort of get less outliers and the resultant image is less noisy. There's also less variability and complexity to the images. So if I do 0.8, we have a look at those images. So quite a bit less noisy, but you can probably notice there are there's less diversity between the images. And we can go even further and scale them down some more. Have a look at these now. So less detail, but also less deformities and less randomness in the images. But this is one technique that you can use to sort of improve the quality. Another technique is actually to use the exponential moving average of the weights while training. So as you can see, the VAE that was used for stable diffusion had an exponential moving average as well. But also when training the unit, there was also a copy of the parameters that was being constructed using an exponential moving average in order to create more stable, less noisy weights. So here I haven't done that just to make it less complex. But in any case, hopefully you got something out of that to see how we can now do latent diffusion, train a model that can generate larger resolution images in a sort of two stage way even when using sort of low end hardware. I'm only using a 2080 Ti here, so you can get much larger GPUs and much more compute, but latent diffusion helps us train a more efficient diffusion model. In the next video, I'd like to show how we can use image transformers to replace the unit with latent diffusion and construct a transformer based latent diffusion model. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that next video. Thank you.